Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the third Sunday of Easter, and today's gospel presents how the risen Lord transformed the hopelessness of his disciples into faith-renewing encounter. Cleopas and his companion left Jerusalem downcast. On their way to Emmaus, Jesus, still unrecognized by them, asked what they were discussing. They told him that Jesus was tried, crucified, and according to their female companions, his tomb was empty. Cleopas and his companion must be really shaken by the events. Jesus accompanied them until they reached their destination. On the way, he explained to them the scriptures. Inviting him to stay with them, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. Those familiar actions opened their eyes. They recognized their master. And they set out at once to return to Jerusalem and reunite with the other disciples who brought the good news to them. The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Friends, the Easter season is a good time to recognize the familiar actions of Jesus. It is always of hope, renewal, and reunion, not only with Him, but also with the community of disciples today, the Church. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to seek corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne. He foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured him forth as you see and hear. The Word of the Lord. the best. 
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father Him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you are ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The Word of the Lord. The Paths to Seeing This Easter Sunday, which is the third Sunday of Easter, uh, I hope that we continue entering the joy and the mystery of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for this Sunday, I invite you to pray to the Lord for this sight, this special gift that only He could give, the sight for us to see who Jesus is and his victory in his resurrection. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter, on the day of Pentecost, became a bold proclaimer of Jesus. He has seen something or someone. And this gift of sight has changed, in a way, his view of the ministry of Jesus, there is an added dimension. He recounted to the people how Jesus ministered, doing a lot of good, and he now adds that all of these good things that Jesus has done was due to the presence of God. So he saw not just a human being doing something good, but the presence of God in him. Then, St. Peter interprets the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. He says, human beings put Jesus to death, but God raised him. It is God who raised him. It is not any human activity that restores life to Jesus or better, that gave Jesus eternal life where he will be untouched anymore by death. It is an action of God. Now, how did Peter see this? Where did this vision come from? It came from his interpretation of the psalm, or the psalm, Psalm 16, helping him interpret the events in the life of Jesus, especially the line that we use in the responsorial psalm. Lord, you will show us the path to life. The Lord will not abandon my soul to the netherworld. This was already present in the psalm, which Peter probably has heard many, many times. But now, this psalm has given him a new sight, a new way of looking at reality, especially at Jesus. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the psalm. And the psalm reads the history of Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters, St. Peter teaches us to look to the events of life from the optic of the Word of God, and we will see things differently. In the second reading, the same St. Peter tells us, again, to look at life. He says, look at your life. You used to tread futile ways, useless ways that had been indicated to you by your forefathers. 
And these ways that we got used to treading, they led us to, to sin, to death. But now, open your eyes. Focus on Jesus. He has redeemed us from the futile ways of living. And we were redeemed by His blood. So the, we were redeemed not by, by anything, but by the precious blood of Jesus. So focus on Him. And so your ways will lead now to life. Forget the futile ways of living, leading to corruption, death, and lack of peace. May Jesus be the center of your hope and of your faith. Then you will see life in a different perspective. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Luke That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord The Paths to sight, the paths to seeing. The Easter season 
is a great season of grace. And one of the graces that we receive is new vision, new sight. And uh, we want to be uh, led by our readings, especially in our need to see who Jesus truly is and how he can transform our lives. In the first reading, St. Peter was helped by Psalm 16. The Word of God helped him to view the ministry of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus from a faith perspective. The light that comes from the Word of God shows Jesus the fulfillment, the fulfillment of what God has promised from, uh, from ages past. And so the Word of God will open our eyes and see for us to see who Jesus truly is. In the second reading, the same Saint Paul, uh, Saint Peter, tells us that we should open our eyes. How? Through hope and faith in Jesus. If we are centered on God in Jesus, and Jesus is our hope and our light, then we will see our life. We will discover that many of the paths that we have been taking are useless, futile. They're not leading us to life. They're really leading us to doom. But with our hope and faith centered on God, we will see life and we will see our roads, our paths more clearly. Now we turn to the gospel. The two disciples on the way to Emmaus. First, they could see only the failure, the failure that Jesus somehow caused in their lives. They, they felt that Jesus, whom they believed would liberate Israel, you know, somehow failed them. He even ended up dying as a criminal. How could, how could someone who everyone hoped would be the political redeemer of Israel end up being sentenced as a criminal? So they were frustrated. Their eyes were blinded by their frustration. Jesus, unrecognized, joins them. Jesus does not distance himself from our disappointments and frustrations. But then he does something. First, he asks them, what are you talking about? So he guides them to enter into their despair. Because sometimes we don't even understand our despair. Get into the heart of your despair. And then Jesus opens the scriptures to them. Again, the word of God making them see slowly the meaning of the events. And their hearts were burning within them. So it was not just their ears, their eyes, but their hearts. Their hearts were making their eyes see the meaning of the events focused on Jesus. So Jesus was not anymore the cause of frustration. Slowly, Jesus was becoming more and more the fulfillment of the scriptures. Then, Jesus stayed with them and did the familiar actions. He took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them. They saw in this sublime act of sharing Sharing one's life, sharing one's bread, sharing one's blood, they recognized the Lord. So in every act of sharing, gift of self, we will see the Lord. But if we see only selfishness, self-interest, all the more we won't see the Lord. So multiply the actions of sharing and we can point to the meaning of the resurrection. When they had finally recognized the Lord, he vanished. And they started their own journey to tell the other disciples that they had seen the Lord. Mission. Mission is another way 
of viewing life differently from the light of the resurrection. We have to go out. We have to share the good news. We have to share to the people what we have seen and heard. And the more we share, the more we see Jesus. The more we share, the more we hear him. The more we share, the more we touch him. So my dear brothers and sisters, please enjoy the different ways by which Jesus opens our eyes so that we could share what we have seen, heard, and touched. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. The Gospel describes Cleopas and his companion looking downcast on their way to Emmaus, and we know the reason. Their teacher, Jesus, who they hoped would redeem Israel, was crucified, and now their female companions reported that his body was not in the tomb. From the description of the events, we can identify the feelings of the two disciples as a mixture of disappointment, frustration, and confusion, leading to despair or hopelessness. They were disappointed because Jesus did not measure up to what they had hoped him to be, a political redeemer of Israel. They were frustrated because Jesus ended his mission in a shameful death, and now his body was nowhere to be found. We could even consider that perhaps they were really waiting for him to rise on the third day as he had taught them. The angels had announced to the women he was alive, but where was he? What happened? They were really confused. And sometimes we would find ourselves in their situation too. Disappointed in God, frustrated with the turn of events, and confused with the messages and signs we receive daily. But look at how the risen Lord approached the hopelessness of Cleopas and his companion. The risen Lord himself drew near to them and walked with them. It is important to note that Jesus did not simply appear and intrude. He gave them the space to air to one another their ideas and feelings. This allowed him to listen to what his disciples had in their mind and heart. And then he asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? The question invited them to enter their frustration but it also demanded an openness to share their hopelessness with Jesus. Thankfully, they opened up to him, and in turn, he opened, he interpreted the scriptures for them about the Messiah. We are familiar with how the encounter ended. They recognized him through the breaking of the bread. But perhaps aside from the Eucharistic character of the ending, we could also devote reflection to the on-the-way part. This is something we could do during the rest of the Easter season. Can we allow ourselves to become Jesus' instruments to seek people out and walk with them, to open again the signs of resurrection? Pope Francis reminds us, Friends, seek out those looking downcast. That's what the risen Lord did during Easter. Walk with them and open their hearts and eyes 
to the signs that Jesus indeed is risen. Hope, peace, newness of life. Saint Cleopas and companion, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what are the paths to new life that the Lord opens for you? Anong mga landas patungo sa bagong buhay ang binubuksan ng Diyos para sa iyo? The second point is, how can the scriptures, the sacraments, and mission be paths of life for those seeking Jesus? Papaano magiging mga landas ng buhay ang salita ng Diyos, sakramento at misyon para sa naghahanap kay Jesus? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Bye.